Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Dr. Tafatwa Maramura, a senior lecturer at the Department of Public Administration and Management, a top researcher with more than 30 publications. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you, Kajasa. Thank you for having me. Doctor, can you tell us how did you become a researcher? Um, actually, it will backtrack to when I was four years old, when I started primary school. Um, but to fast forward it then, I think past uh, undergraduate, past postgraduate, in the present day, if we're going to speak about being a researcher, you would want to speak about you know, what I call the CCCD, that's communication, collaboration, curiosity and dedication. So when you speak about curiosity, as a researcher you have to be someone that's curious. You want to be someone that knows how to connect things. Why are things happening this way? Why should we connect them in this particular way? You also want to be someone that communicates. Because you find that when you're working in research, you want you speak to different people. People of a higher level than your own, people of a lower level than your own. So you always want to make sure that you communicate to those people in a humble level because every single one of them brings a certain important aspect to the world of research. Then you also speak about a collaboration because in research you are nothing without the other people. Because obviously teamwork makes the dream work. And in course about umuntu umuntu nabantu. So obviously there's a lot of people that make the dream work at the end of the day in research. Because if you speak of COVID-19, for instance, it's not just uh, the health sciences that was at play in ensuring that we dealt with the pandemic at the time. So there are a lot of other people, a lot of other collaborative um, efforts that come into place when working with people. Even the very last person at, at, at the lower level that you think only sweeps your office, if they are not there, your office is not going to be, you know, you're not going to be able to work in that office. If you're speaking of labs, and a person that just sweeps the lab at the end of the day, if they're not there, your entire research does not uh, become cumulative. So all of those are important. And then there's determination. You need to always try, 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 and try again. There's a professor in our department, Professor Hendricks, who always says, research is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So at times you try and address this uh, problem, and it doesn't work out. You don't quit, you keep pushing. So I think those are the four key components that you know uh, make up what we say is a researcher in essence. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, what are you currently working on? Um, first of all, I'm currently working on my life. <laughs> I'm working on my life, yeah. I think we can't speak of, you know, the intangibles or the tangibles that we're working on if we don't speak about this machine. Because this machine is what drives every other, you know, effort in the world, in everything that I'm going to do or in the research or in my own personal life, it's this machine. And I'm just taking everything slowly, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I'm just trying to be more mindful and especially being grateful. I mean, we see where the economy is going. If you're not careful, you know, you'll collapse. And you also see the rates of suicide and, uh, you know, just how young people, you know, are dying from the sleep or committing suicide. So I think the best thing is firstly to work on this machine, and I'm currently working on it. And secondly, I'm supervising research students, postgraduate uh, uh, students, and I'm also working on currently working on traveling to uh, Europe and Canada and uh, Philippines for my international winter conferences because I mean as a researcher it's always important that your work just doesn't speak to the people within your space. It also needs to go out. People that are on an international space, they give you feedback and you also engage, like I said, in those collaborative efforts. You find people that you can work with on your research projects. And um, I'm also currently an, an ESAP um, member, the Imaging Scholars uh, Acceleration Program of the Rector, and I'm working with, coll uh, with collaborators from other faculties on various projects as well from um, the ESAP. And uh, yeah, I think for now my hands are full in that regard, and that's where I'm trying to move towards. Uh, with regard to the SDGs, what are you targeting at the moment? 
So, um, you know, just not necessarily to just shock you, but to bring, you know, those lights in your brain to go on. You know, the world has 8 billion people, and 2 billion of those do not have access to portable water. So, SDG number 7, which I'm researching on, because I'm a water, my interests are in water. So, essentially, I'm a water researcher, and to think that 2 billion people in the world don't have access to portable water then to think that of those two billion, 500 million, which is necessarily half a billion of those are in Africa. So my research is just essentially, you know, channeled towards ensuring that there's sustainable service delivery, because if you're thinking that half a billion people don't have access to water every single day, we brush our teeth, you know, we flush with clean water, you know, we use water for our laundry machines, we use water for our swimming pools, then there's someone who just doesn't have access to just a cup to drink at the end of the day. So I think it's important then that you know we channel our research, which is why I'm also channeling my research towards ensuring that you know people within you know low income households have access to portable water because that's what um, Sustainable Development Goal Seven speaks about: ensuring the accessibility, affordability, and availability of portable water for all. Okay, thank you. And then, with regard to the gaps in your field, what are the exciting gaps in your field? I think just to go back then, you know, to those stats that I just gave you, just realizing, you know, each time you're brushing your teeth and the tap is open, each time, you know, each time you flush water, that's clean water, water that you can drink. And that's almost 20 liters of water, 15 to 20 liters depending on the septic tank. So you're just thinking that I've just flushed water each time. This 20 liters could feed a whole family and some low income household. And then you've just flushed it, you know, you pee or you defecate, you just flush and all of the water goes to waste. So we should think of other ways, alternative and sustainable ways in which we use our water so that it's sustainable at the end of the day, because you might have access, but then just think of the next person that doesn't have access, because, you know, it's important. Like I said, when you speak of Ubuntu, what is it that we mean? You might have access, but do you think when you sleep at night of other people that don't have access? So what should you be doing, you know, to ensure that, you know, the person right at the bottom of the barrel has access to water? Sure. That's the thought for the day. Yes, we need to value water than money. Yeah, actually, yes. it's, it's, they say uh, water is life and sanitation is dignity. Yes. So when you just think of life, you know, water has no alternatives because right now, you know, we're going into load shedding. We don't have electricity. I mean, that's a public secret right now. But we have alternatives. You can use gas, you can use solar, you can use paraffin, you can use coal, you can use other energy alternatives. But when we have water shedding, think of Gauteng right now, we're going into day zero. Cape Town went into day zero. Then just think of what alternatives do we have for water. Just think of that. Just think of any alternative of water that you have. When you don't have water at the house, what other alternative do you have to use? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. So what are we doing then to ensure that we always have access, we always have availability of potable water? So, Doctor, what would you say to aspiring researchers? Um, I think to aspiring researchers, I would obviously say, you're never too young, neither are you ever too old. Because you think that maybe I'm too young, so then I shouldn't. Because professors are at a certain age, or because doctors are at a certain age, you need to push. Because there's never a barrier. And also, you might also think that, no, but, you know, if you to start undergrad, you need to be this certain age, you need to be 16, you need to be 17, you need to be 18. You never too old. Always start. The goal is just to start. Like I said, Rome was never built in a day. The goal is to just start. Break that barrier. Whatever age, whatever gender, whatever, you know, color you are, nothing of that defines who a researcher is. It's your work that speaks to the international space. Because I think a wise man once said that, you know, if we don't try, we actually risk failing. We ensure we fail. But when we try, we risk failing. If you don't try, then you ensure that you're obviously going to fail at the end of the day. So I think that's important to always try. Try, try, and try again. 
Thank you, Dr. Apart from research, what are you passionate about? Um, I'm not so passionate about a lot of things. <laughs> But um, my heart lies with uh, the girl child who's orphaned. So uh, if you know that almost 600 billion, I mean 600 million children, girl children in Africa don't have access to education. So my heart lies with them, considering that you know the girl child needs, needs to be empowered. So what are we doing to ensure that you know the girl child has access? Otherwise, they just married off young and then. A generation, a future, legacy is cut short. So I have a foundation that's named after my mother that um, pays and supports and empowers young girls who are in rural uh, primary schools and um, pays for them to ensure that they have access, you know, to the uh, to education at least to primary education because it is key and it is, you know, every girl child's human right to have access to education and. Uh, Apart from that, I also love hiking. I enjoy hiking. I enjoy the outdoors. I enjoy yoga. And um, I used to be a competitive swimmer and I used to do competitive karate. But now, because you can't be a jack of all tricks, I mean, you need to give those. Because, I mean, if you think of, uh, if I say tennis right now, what comes to your mind? Who comes to your mind? Serena, Serena Williams. Williams. If I say, you know, sprinting or athletics, who comes to your mind? You say Bolt. So he can't be a master. <laughs> he can't. So I, I quit karate. I quit. I think I didn't quit. I quit competitive karate. I quit competitive swimming. But then my passion still lies there. And I enjoy it now and again. So, yeah. I think that's also a lesson for the aspiring researchers. You can't be a master of all. I mean, a jack of all trades because you need to just master one. Focus with it and run with it. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. We have learned that uh, not only through research that you are contributing, but also you are taking a young child to a brighter future. So you are applying back to the community. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your time. Pleasure.